Hello everyone, my name is Emma Cottier and I'm here to just showcase my love of interactive choice boards to just deliver really impactful, engaging, and meaningful learning opportunities for students. They're my absolute fave and I use them all the time. So we're gonna get a little creative and maybe show all the different ways you can use them in your classroom. So welcome officially to Interactive Choice Boards. I'm gonna be choosing Google Slides to demonstrate this, but you could certainly create uh, these choice boards in any other program. Be sure to save this link. So in my resource deck, I am giving you many of my templates that are just tried and true and wonderful. So in a new Chrome tab, bit.ly forward slash cool choice boards, um, be sure, like I said, be sure to save this resource, either add a shortcut to your drive or file make a copy. Uh, because like I said, I'm giving you many of my own personal choice boards that I use in my classroom. And I always love this quote, you can't use up creativity. The more you use, the more you have. And I find that so true with choice boards. The more I make them, the more I can just integrate them seamlessly in, the, in my classroom and use them year after year. So I love this because the choice boards I create now are certainly different than the very first ones I created. I just think they get better and better and hopefully you will reap the rewards of that today. So you might be thinking, why choice boards? Why even do that? So interactive choice boards, they offer students a selection of activities to demonstrate their learning. They empower students with choice. They cater to the diversity of student learners. They promote engagement. And honestly, they just make learning fun because who doesn't love choice? Here are also five main reasons. Uh, like I said, great for student engagement, differentiated instruction. And I, I think that's huge because we have to remember what works for one student may not work for another. I also love how it, you know, increases or maybe facilitates the development of higher order thinking skills. It's great for assessment because it gives opportunities for students to like truly showcase their ideas. And it's great for classroom management. So I use them for en enrichment activities, early finishers. I even drop them in my Google Classroom. So it's like, okay, you're done that. Here are all these activities that you can do. Now let's start with maybe a little choice board inspiration to get the juices flowing. Um, and here are maybe just some ways that you could incorporate choice boards in your classroom. Um, maybe it's simply two writing prompts to start your English block. Maybe it's four paragraph topics, you know, from a novel, from science, from social studies, but maybe they have four topics students can re respond to. Um, maybe you're doing a research project of some sort and you want students to collect their digital information from certain sites, why not link that research for kids and just really streamline their navigation process? Um, maybe you're doing a novel study and you can, uh, students can have like four ways to show their learning. Maybe it's math enrichment for those early finishers. You could link some websites, um, you could link some additional questions, maybe some cool uh, math activities they can do. Virtual field trips, why not link in some cool things from like Google Arts and Culture? Um, digital escape rooms. I actually make a few custom ones. So I'll create like a little Google slide launch plaid for them. It's great for like rubrics and your criteria sheet. Maybe um, you want to link some YouTube videos. There's so much that you can do. Now here is example number one. And like I said, if this is helpful, please go ahead and just copy it and use it on your own. You can use my Bitmoji or uh, delete it and add yours. So this is just like a basic uh, choice board template. Here is a math one and a little fun fact, these are actually all linked for you. Each one of these is an eight and a half by 11 Google slide that I've custom made. Kind of perfect, I don't know, grade five to grade seven. Um, just some basic math skills like ratio, uh, fractions. So enjoy that choice board, it's a lot of fun. This is kind of a, a template that you could use for a novel study. Maybe you've done a read aloud and then students can have those options. Here, like I said, digital escape rooms. I make this for computer science education week. Um, maybe you have a digital library. So this is an example that I use as well. So now let's get into a little choice board demonstration so you can make one as your own. Um, as a little bonus today, I've included this tutorial uh, so you can come back to it, it's in the slides. Um, but the very first thing I do 
And I'm going to be demoing this live, but I just want to show you. It's just a really simple five-step tutorial. So number one, I select a nice soothing background color. Step two, I color block. So that means part of the slide, um, and I usually choose the left. It doesn't really matter. I put a rectangle, and that just becomes a great place to put your instructions. Step number three, I add however many shapes I want options. So you could use circles. You could use rectangles. I'm particularly fond of the rounded rectangle. Don't know why. Just love it. And why I love shapes is you can simply just click and add your text right in. So step number four, I simply just click and I add my text. I add my different options or the labels. Like if I'm doing videos and things, it's just simply a label or a way to communicate to students what might potentially be linked. And simply step number five is when you click on the outside of those shapes, you can either hit the little chain icon in the top menu or control K. And you can link something from a website. You can link something from your Google Drive. Um, you have so many options. Now, it doesn't always have to be a Google Doc. It could be another slide. It could be a Google site. Um, everything is pretty compatible, which I love. And here is a finished product that is going to be your goal today. So if you want a little, take a little screenshot, um, go right ahead. But that is our goal today. So let me now hop over into Google Slides and let me do this little demo with you. All right. So here I am. I'm in my Google Slide. I'm going to follow that process that I've just outlined. I'm going to start with a background color. Um, I have a lot of colors loaded in here just because it's from my slides. Um, so I set my background color and then through the shape menu. So the shape menu is the overlapping circle and square. I go in and grab my rectangle and a little kind of design theory for you. Um, what tends to look really nice is a color that's a little bit lighter or a little bit darker. You don't want to have two kind of totally different colors. Uh, it just makes it really distracting. So like I said, I like to go a little bit darker, a little bit lighter. Um, you know, you can explore, move around your different colors, whatever works for you. And I think maybe, I don't know, I might just go, I'm going to go here and then I'm going to go a little bit darker. So there we go. There is my choice board. Then, like I said, it's just a matter of inserting your shapes. Like I said, I'm a big fan of that rounded rectangle. I will simply click and drag to make one. Now, this is the beautiful part you really only have to format one. So I'm going to choose my fill color. I'm going to choose a border color. And yeah, and like I said, just like a little bit darker, staying with the, in the color tone looks really nice. Once I have one, I can simply hit control D and I'm going to duplicate that. I have two. That red horizontal line will tell me that they're perfectly aligned. And then I can simply click and drag, control D to duplicate again. And now I can line them up. And uh, if you want, the beautiful part is if you click and drag to select them all, you can like adjust them, you can move them around. So I believe that was step number three, just adding your shapes. Step number four is to add your text. Now, I think I'm going to make this a paragraph writing choice board because paragraph writing is pretty universal. So I'm going to set my label. And remember, I'm not even using a text box. Because I have used shapes, I can simply type right in there. Um, you can adjust your fonts. I'm choosing the font April Fatface. I like to make my titles nice and big. So... There's no confusion amongst my students. Um, so there I have, I have my paragraph writing that's looking sharp. Now I can go over here and I will type activity uh, number one and maybe activity number one, um, I'm gonna maybe focus on different styles of paragraphs. So maybe my first one is a persuasive paragraph. And once I have one, I'm actually just going to format one and I'm going to make this like, you know, a little bigger for students. We can bold it. I like to go get, you know, a fun font for the title. Add a splash of color. Make this a little bit bigger. So I have my activity number one. Um, once I have my typing done, I can paste it into my next one. So activity number two could be my expository paragraph. 
pasting my next one, oct uh, activity number three could be my descriptive paragraph. And activity number four will be my narrative paragraph. So I have all my shapes and all my text lined up here. You may on this side, even in, you know, a smaller font, you may want to include a few instructions for your students. And I'm going to drop down. Please select one of the following paragraph options to complete. And if you really want to kind of spice things up a little bit, you can even insert uh, image, search the web. I like to just do things like writing icon. And uh, this just like adds a little bit more design. Um, I could then just leave it as a color. So I think that's a pretty sharp looking choice board. Now, because we want an interactive choice board, we need to do some linking. And to do that, I simply just click on my shape. Not click to type, but do you see how that cursor changes? It goes from a typing cursor on the outside. I call it like the compass cursor where you have all four. You simply want to get your compass cur cursor and click control K and you can do the link. Now I need to go and make sure I have a link. So I'm going to pop over. Um, I can get something from my drive. Now you're probably not going to be able to see my drive here, um, but I'm going to go into my Google drive and you just need to make sure that the share settings. So I've just kind of grabbed the link of a Google doc. And if I hit control K, I can paste that link in right there. So now this is the cool part here. I'll just show you. Now I have this, it's popping up. So I have, you'll know, oops, do you see that I put expository paragraph on my persuasive? So I can hit this remove link, pop over one, control K, paste that in. That's just the, the link from a Google doc. Make sure your share settings say view, not edit, because you don't want kiddos um, going in and messing up your Google docs. But you just want to make sure where students can view that it's not restricted private settings. Hit apply. And now that is linked. And then you can drop this in the Google Classroom. Um, if you don't have things linked, you can simply just like project it up on the board. Um, but I absolutely love so students can just click. They could even like preview the different activities. Um, I just absolutely love it. So there's a little tutorial on making choice boards. Now I'm going to pop back over here. We've done our little demo. As a few little goodies today, I just want to share a few other slides today. Um, one, I make kind of a choice board for snow day. This isn't interactive, but I just send it home. Like you can download as a JPEG and send it to parents like snowy day. Here's some suggested activities. Um, this is for my start of the US school year to help keep me organized. This is my own interactive choice board. So I remember to take attendance, um, that I link my welcome slides, that I show them the timetable. So I use interactive choice boards for myself to stay organized. And remember, you have these templates in that resource deck. Maybe you want kind of to do the choice board fields, not interactive, but like as a temperature, a little temperature check, how are your students feeling today? And maybe you are like welcoming. Uh, so these are for like my little buddies class. I have grade eight. But if you're like setting expectations, uh, you can kind of use this choice board template for something like that. And lastly, thank you so much for joining today. A reminder to subscribe to our channel and email list to get access to super, more of these super cool videos, some tips and resources just like this. Be sure to subscribe to us at Design for Learning. Thank you for joining me today and I hope to see you again soon.